It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. It is the Tuesday, November 22nd edition of the show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. Hopefully everybody is having a great Thanksgiving week thus far. We have got some games to discuss. Of course, this is the college football under the radar against the spread pick them for rivalry week for week 13. Now, obviously, I've already done the show for BetUS. Uh, all of my official plays it will be found over there. Go ahead and check those out. But, uh, but yeah, let me go on and tell you that first. Uh, first off, you can check out the website for this place, winningcureseverything.com, and you can enter in the contest over there. We do have the picks contest. Uh, the winner gets a $25 gift certificate from Amazon every single week. I think we're going to keep it going through championship week, through bowl season, etc. We'll figure it out. But either way. Go ahead and check winningcureseverything.com out over there. The show is powered each and every time out by BetUS. That is America's premier online sports book. They are, in fact, where the game begins. And I host the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. This week, we are not doing a Wednesday show. I'm sure that you know why. But in case you're not, uh, our production crew, they do have families, much like us. So, Thanksgiving, yeah, a lot of us are going to be traveling. So, so go ahead and, uh, and watch the Tuesday BetUS show. Let's, uh, let's look into a few more things here. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The BetUS College Football Show. Go ahead and check out BetUS.com. Check out the BetUS College Football Show, as I mentioned. And we have a new sponsor on the show as well. The show is brought to you by Flow Sports. Now, I don't know that you've uh, ever heard of Flow Sports. I'm sure that some of you that are more diehards probably have. We're going to pull them up on the screen here. Flow Sports, innovator in live event streaming, giving you access to over 200,000 sports competitions live or on demand with exclusive behind-the-scenes coverage and original programming for over 25 different sports. Now, they've got wrestling, grappling, racing, uh, marching, track, cycling, mile split, varsity TV, bowling, softball, baseball, basketball, football, cheer, and all kinds of things, right? Rugby, soccer, gymnastics. They got combat sports. I mean, they got everything you could possibly want. There's a link in the description. Go ahead, take advantage of that deal that they've got right now. Because we're getting into Division Three football, playoffs, etc. I mean, we got some good stuff going on. So go ahead and check them out. All right. We got games to discuss. Week 13. It is the finale of the regular season. The last weekend of the college football. Can you believe it's already here? I mean, just unbelievable. We're going to be faster with these this week, I believe. So let's go ahead and toss on the music. And we got games to hit. We're going to start with Baylor at Texas. Texas an eight-point favorite. The total sits at 56. And, of course, over at BetUS. This is a Friday, 12 p.m. Eastern Time game on ESPN. Let's pull up the stats here. My numbers show Texas favored by 8.78. Hmm. Now that is over the last five weeks, looking at the stats there. It is right on the number. And when you look at matchups, there are certainly questions here as, uh, as far as Baylor's defense is concerned. Um... The rushing rate is not great for Texas here. Um, Their PPA per rush is number 68. They're only running the ball 46% of the time. They are, let's see, success rate, they're number 46, uh, 46% success rate. So, yeah, this is where Baylor is not great. They're number 104 in rushing success rate, number 99 in defensive rushing uh, PPA per rush. So that's where I think Texas could take advantage of them. Yeah, you look at the passing success rate. It's a, this Baylor defense is just not great, right? Number 71 PPA per drive on defense. Uh, but Texas' offense over the past five weeks is number 80 in that spot. Uh, the Baylor offense, it, like where they're the most successful is running the football. Well, you can't really do that 
on on the Texas defense, at least not great. So I look at this, I think this is a game where Texas at home can find a way to really let loose. I I think Baylor put everything they had into that TCU game. So I'm going to take Texas here. Give me the Longhorns to cover the eight. Uh, I feel pretty good about it here. By the way, my record on this, uh, 71 and 71 thus far on the season over here. And obviously my best bets over at BetUS are, are doing significantly better. Uh, but I was 3-8-1 and one last week, and that brought me back to even. I had scratched up a little bit, but regardless. Uh, so yes, Texas to cover the eight on that first game there. Next game on the docket. NC State heads to North Carolina, and North Carolina is a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Total of 56. This is Friday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC. And let's look at the numbers. Over the past five weeks, this has got North Carolina favored by eight. Now, North Carolina does not have to win this game. They are already in the ACC championship game, and they're coming off of a brutal loss at home to Georgia Tech last week, and that Georgia Tech defense shut them down. I don't think they had faced a defense that had some of the athletes that Georgia Tech had, which is kind of concerning. Um, And you would say, well, what about Pitt? And what about whatever? Georgia Tech was fighting for their lives. Uh, North Carolina had to have the Pitt game. So they might have been a little more motivated, and I'm sure that they never even thought that they would actually lose to Georgia Tech. I mean, they'd been in so many close games, they just kind of thought they were going to win it. It's time for a reset. I look at this, and while the number... You know, at six and a half, or the line at six and a half, it maybe screams uh, that you should probably take NC State. I, I, I saw that NC State offense uh, when they had to move down to the fourth string quarterback against Louisville. Like, it, don't get me wrong, this Louisville defense is significantly better than North Carolina's, but uh, NC State's got problems as far as their pass defense is concerned. Uh, you're not going to be able to run on them at all. I mean, they're number two in PPA per rush over the last five weeks. Uh, They are number one in rushing success rate allowed over the last five weeks. But teams are only running the ball on them 38% of the time. And it's mainly because they're really good at run defense. And when it comes to passing defense, like teams are passing on NC State 60% of the time over the past five weeks because NC State is number 99 in PPA per pass. North Carolina's offense is number 37. And NC State is number 61 in passing success rate allowed. NC, or excuse me, North Carolina is number five on offense. Like, this is a spot where I think North Carolina is going to exact a little bit of revenge for last season's last-second loss to NC State. Uh, Give me the Tar Heels to cover the six-and-a-half here. I I really like what uh, what North Carolina can do on offense here um, because I think they match up really, really well against NC State. Moving along, Arkansas is a three-point favorite total of 56 heading to Missouri on Friday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. Now this one, this is very interesting to me because when I look at the line, or when I look at the spread, it's sitting at three. It's actually moved down an entire point because it was four. I think it might have opened at four and a half, but it's down to three now. And my number over the past five weeks has Arkansas by 5.29. Now, Let's just take a look and see. The Arkansas defense has been pretty good against the pass, number 39 PPA per pass. Their defense is number 24 in passing success rate allowed. But Missouri can actually throw the football a little bit, number 20 in PPA per pass, number 21 in passing success rate, but they only throw the ball 44% of the time. They want to run it. And you can run on Arkansas, Uh, which obviously you saw that. By the way, these numbers are garbage time excluded. So really none of the stats after Ole Miss went down 42-6 to uh, matter as far as this is concerned. And yet Arkansas's rushing defense is still that bad. I don't know how Missouri is going to necessarily score here, but when you look at Missouri's defense, Arkansas wants to be able to run the football. They run it 58% of the time, over the past five weeks. Well, Missouri's defense, number 39 in PPA per rush allowed, number 36 in rushing success rate allowed. They were number 29 in stuff rate. 
we saw LSU's defense do something like this to where Arkansas just could not move the football. Now, obviously, K.J. Jefferson was out for that game. But I like Missouri's chances here. Like, I know this is insane. But I think they can win the game outright because I'm not sure what the motivation is for Arkansas at this point in the season. They have uh, they've set up to where they're going to a bowl game. So we got nothing to worry about as far as that is concerned. They have not won any of their rivalry games, but do they consider Missouri a rival? That's where this gets a little tricky. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to ride with Missouri at home because they still need to get to a bowl game. They're they're sitting at 5 wins. Uh give me give me Missouri plus 3 here. I uh, I'm going to go against the number or against my number anyway. Um I like this spot for Missouri. I just do. Arkansas has been up and down all year. Moving along. One more before we hit a break. Nebraska at Iowa. Iowa is favored by 10.5. Now, this one is at home. It's uh, Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern time on the Big Ten Network. Um, This is so weird. I mean, the total sits at 38 on this. Um, Let's pull up the the numbers. I've got Iowa by 11.22. Now, the issue, of course, is you look over here and Nebraska's number 121 in PPA margin, while Iowa's number 39. Uh, But Nebraska's offense has just been putrid. They cannot run the football. They're number 131 uh, in rush rate, even though... um, ah, Excuse me. They're number 131 in defensive rush rate. Uh, Nebraska's offense here. Uh, They're number 110 in PPA per pass. They're number 125 in PPA per rush. They, they're they pretty balanced as far as running and throwing. But, man. Like, this is... I don't know how they're going to be able to put up points against Iowa. And that's why this line... I mean, Iowa as a double-digit favorite is crazy. And yet, at the same time, like I think that Iowa may not even have to score on offense. And they could still cover this line because I don't think that Nebraska is going to be able to score. So, I did... The Nebraska defense, like, Iowa's not great at running the football. I mean, obviously, number 104 in rushing success rate. But, like, Nebraska's defense is number 123. Like, this is, this could get bad. This could get really, really bad. Uh, Iowa needs to win this to go to the Big Ten championship game. That would put Iowa at 8-4, and four, which is mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, I don't, I don't see how this works out. In, in Nebraska's favor at all. Uh, Nebraska number 99 in turnover margin. You look over here and you see that Iowa is number six. Yeah, I think we're going to see some crazy stuff. You remember how this game played out last year. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead and give me Iowa on that one. I am so curious. So curious about this. <laughs> all right, on the other side, we're going to start moving into the Saturday action Uh, We're going to start off with South Carolina at Clemson and Louisville at Kentucky. But first, let's move over here. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back, and BetUS TV has you covered. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff, only on the BetUS TV College football channel. Visit winningcureseverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit betustv.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports Show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right. Let me go on and tell you about Valtimary Surf Company. College Town Clothing Apparel line, they make surf company shirts for whatever your favorite college town is. Tuscaloosa, Norman, Starkville, uh, wherever it is, Columbus, etc., Athens. Uh, they've got great designs, 
the material is fantastic. Like, it feels super good. Um, I, I love the shirts. Go ahead and check out the link in the description, or you can go to valtimerysurfco.com. Use the promo code Gary10, G-A-R-Y-1-0. You can get 10% off of your order. Uh, great guys. They will treat you well. They have treated me well. So go ahead and check it out. I think you're going to like what you find over there. Also, again, just a reminder, go to winningcureseverything.com. Enter in the contest page. You can enter the picks contest for this week. You pick 11 games against the spread in college football, and the winner of that this week gets $25 in Amazon money. That's right, an Amazon gift card. So go ahead and check that out. Now, moving right along... We are talking about South Carolina heading to Clemson. Clemson, a 14-point favorite. Total sits at 52. This is Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC. And let's go on and pull up the stats for you. Now, these stats are, of course, over the past five weeks. I, I've got Clemson winning this game 29 to eh, 17, somewhere around there. So I've got Clemson by like 12 and a half, basically. I look at this, and you see Clemson is number 74 in PPA margin over the past five weeks. Uh, South Carolina is number 50. Number 108 in offensive PPA per drive for Clemson. Number 121 in defensive PPA per drive for uh, South Carolina. But South Carolina's offense over the last five weeks, number 25 in PPA per drive. And the Clemson defense is number 19. It's pretty crazy. To look at this, Uh, this Clemson offense, I believe, is going to be able to run all over the South Carolina defense. Clemson number 46 in PPA per rush on offense. South Carolina number 125 in that. Clemson number 13 in rushing success rate. South Carolina number 128. So there is a distinct advantage. Uh, There's a huge advantage as far as standard down success rate. So Clemson will be able to stay ahead of the chains. They'll be able to keep the ball away from South Carolina's offense. Uh, Clemson number 22 in standard down success rate. South Carolina number 120 in that spot. And this South Carolina defense has not been good over the past five weeks at all. Now, you look on offense. And where has South Carolina had the most success whenever they actually have had success? Uh, that would be throwing the football. Number 12 in PPA per pass. They're number 44 in passing success rate. Number 15 in passing explosiveness. They are pretty good on passing downs as well whenever they do get behind the chains because... Well, they, they sometimes do, right? Um, 35% of their plays are passing downs. So third and long, etc. Or second and long, third and long, whatever it is. The Clemson defense is really good against the pass. Turns out over the past five weeks, they're number 10 in PPA per pass. They're number 21 in passing success rate allowed. And they're number 21 in causing havoc. So they're going to be after Spencer Rattler. And that's one thing that Tennessee was not able to do. They were not, ever, they were never able to get him uncomfortable. Clemson is going to be on top of that, absolutely. Uh, as far as running the football, like if if Lloyd is back for South Carolina, maybe these numbers change a little bit. Uh, but I still kind of trust Clemson's defensive line to be able to stop the run here, um, even if they have not done a great job as of late. They're number seventy-eight in PPA per rush defense, while South Carolina is number fifty-nine in PPA per rush on offense. Uh, But success rate, you know, flipped around. South Carolina, number 83 on offense. uh, Clemson, number 64 on defense. I I look at this. I don't believe that South Carolina is going to have as much success against this Clemson defense. And I think that Clemson's offense is perfectly set up to be able to score on South Carolina's defense. I'm going to take Clemson. Minus the 14. There's, I think there's going to be a lot of people on South Carolina. Oh, it's finally Spencer Rattler got it figured out, etc. Eh, let's just let's hold off on this uh, because we all kind of thought the same thing last year. You know, after uh, South Carolina's went over Auburn, after they went over Florida, and they go into that Clemson game against a Clemson team that was not very good, uh, that didn't have a whole lot to play for other than just pride, and Clemson beat them thirty to nothing in Columbia. Now South Carolina's got to go to Clemson with Clemson still having a shot at the playoff. Just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Give me Clemson. Minus 14 on this one. Moving along. Louisville heads to Kentucky, and the Wildcats are a three-point favorite. The total sits at 43 over at BetUS. 
This one is at 3 p.m. Eastern time on the SEC network. And let's go ahead and pull it up on your screen. I've got Louisville favored by seven based on the last five weeks of numbers. Now, the reason why Kentucky would be favored here is we have done this time and time again where Louisville looked pretty good and, eh, it, they go into this ballgame and they just get absolutely housed. Now, the other part of this is Malik Cunningham may not play. And if that is the case, uh, I mean, Kentucky can do almost anything that they want to. Kentucky is number 107 in PPA per drive over the last five weeks, but you see... They have not been able to throw the football. Number 117 in passing success rate. Number 113 in PPA per pass. Well, Louisville is number 11 on defense. And number 43 in passing success rate allowed on defense. Uh, They're number 28 in havoc rate. Kentucky's offense is number 110. Um, And while this is, you know, opponent adjusted, I still don't know how much I trust it. Like, the Louisville defense is really, really good. But... You know, what is the ACC compared to the SEC? And I don't know that we know the answer to that. So, I look at this, uh, when Louisville has the ball on offense, there are some things that Kentucky and their defense might be able to slow down, uh, but I can't really find it. Like, rushing success rate for Louisville is number 111. Uh, Kentucky's defense is number 57 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, Kentucky passing the ball number 58 ppa per pass well kentucky's defense is number 69 Uh, there's the one thing that that louisville is pretty good at is explosiveness Uh, they're number 40 in passing explosiveness well kentucky is number 14 at defending that now if louisville runs the ball explosively is that a word then uh they're number 17 in rushing explosiveness on offense is louisville and kentucky is number 77 so that's a way that they could maybe take advantage of it um I, I am going to go based on the talent that we have seen and how Mark Stoops treats this game every single year. And I know that the line is coming down. I don't care. I'm going to take Kentucky minus the three. I'm going to go against my number on this because I think Mark Stoops has got something up his sleeve for Scott Satterfield. Louisville is just never competitive in this game. At least they haven't been in the in the recent past. So give me Kentucky. Cover three on that one. Minnesota heads to Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, a three and a half point home favorite, total of 36 over at Bet US. 3 30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. Wisconsin, it looks like, is going to hire Jim Leonard as their next head coach. They posted up the job online. It has to be posted for seven days before they can officially announce a hire. They did that on Sunday, or no, the Saturday night right after the Nebraska game. Um, you know, it's basically set up where after this Minnesota game, they can go ahead and announce Jim Leonard as the hire. So let's look at the numbers. Uh, I've got Minnesota favored by 0.36 points based on the last five weeks of stats. Now that is, of course, with Tanner Morgan out, etc. Um, this, this Wisconsin passing attack is, is just not very good. And that is the one place where they would have been suited to maybe take advantage of this Minnesota defense. You can't really run on Minnesota's defense. Uh, The Gophers are are number seven in PPA per rush, number 14 in rushing success rate allowed. Wisconsin's okay at running the football. You know, number 49 PPA per rush, number 40 in rushing success rate. Uh, But when you look at trying to pass the ball, like Graham Mertz, et cetera, first off, Wisconsin number 109 in the country in interception percentage per game. Like, that is, it it ain't good. It ain't good. Um, In Minnesota, a a distinct advantage at taking the ball away. They're number 12 in that spot on defense. The one spot, like, passing success rate, Minnesota's defense is number 22. That's really good. But Minnesota's defense is number 66 in PPA per pass allowed. Well, Wisconsin's number 126 in that, and number 115 in passing success rate. Like, they don't throw it a lot. 39% of the time does Wisconsin. Uh, Minnesota, great at, you know, I say great, they're pretty good at defending it. Uh, but their biggest strength is against the run, and that's exactly what Wisconsin's going to try and do. They run the ball 60% of the time. Like this, I don't think that's going to go well. On the other side, this uh, Wisconsin defense is actually looking a lot better than they did at the beginning of the season, which obviously you would hope they would develop, especially under Jim Leonard, who is a defensive wizard, as everybody believes. 
but I think that there's still ways that that Mo Ibrahim can get going on this uh, defense. So I uh, I look at Wisconsin's defense. I think, man, this is kind of a stalemate. Which obviously, like you see the uh, my projected score, twenty point five seven to twenty point two two. Yeah, I I like I like when we've got a, a push like this, and I'm getting three points of value, uh, especially three and a half. Like, yeah, I'll take Minnesota plus three and a half. Uh, even if they lose by three, I still cover here. This feels like a good spot. Feels like a good spot to me. Um, I will take P.J. Fleck. It, it seems like he and his team are always fired up for this game. Uh, they had not beaten Wisconsin in a long time before he got there. They've uh, they've done it twice recently. So give me Minnesota plus three and a half on that. Give me, uh, let's see, let's move into Wake Forest Minus three and a half, total of 66 and a half at Duke. Of course, latest numbers at BetUS. 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the ACC Network. And this one is an interesting, interesting game. Um, Wake Forest, obviously, not what everybody thought at the beginning of the season. Uh, they put up some huge numbers on Clemson. And they got they got NFL wide receivers, etc. But, man, they were... They have just not looked good here lately, right? They did get a win, kind of got things back on track against Syracuse last week, but it's still, there's there's some questions to me about this football team. Uh, we'll show you here on the screen, of course, looking at the stats over the last five weeks. I've got uh, Wake Forest favored by half a point, and yet this line is three and a half. I think you already know which direction I'm going. I like what Duke is doing on both offense and defense. The defense is not great, um, and yet they're still able to uh, get get a lot of stops, right? Uh, the biggest thing for Duke's defense here is they're number 24 in standard downs PPA. Uh, they're number 20, uh, 44 in standard downs success rate. So they are able to get teams into, uh, you know, passing down situations, right? Second and long, third and long, etc. Well... They're not great at, at stopping that. But they do find a way to get stops eventually, uh, especially you know scoring opportunities per game. They only give up uh, number 21 in the country, 4.25 per game. Um, and they're number 70 in points per scoring opportunity allowed. So it is what it is. I do like Duke's offense, though, especially against this Wake Forest defense because I think Riley Leonard is going to be able to throw the ball uh, however much he wants to on them. Um, rushing explosiveness, by the way, Duke, over the last five weeks, uh, their offense is number two, and Wake Forest defense is number 43. So that's something else to pay attention to, maybe. But yeah, I like uh, I like the passing downs PPA for for Duke's offense. Uh, even if they do get behind the chains, they can throw the football. They can get out of those spots. And they're number 26 in passing downs PPA. Wake Forest number 112. So I expect there to be uh, a lot of points here. You know, I know that my projection up there, as far as the total is, don't don't pay attention to the total. Just pay attention to the spread. The spread has been good to us. Um, I think this could get a little pointy. Like this is sixty six and a half for the total. Yeah, I don't think either one of these teams can get off the field necessarily. Um, if anybody was going to do it, I would trust Duke, uh, who is number thirty seven PPA per drive over the past five weeks. Um, but they're doing it up against a a pretty good offense in Wake Forest, so long as Wake Forest doesn't turn the ball over, which something to pay attention to here. Duke is number two in the country in turnover margin. They are number 11 in giveaways per game, number seven in takeaways. Wake Forest is number 97 in giveaways per game, number 76 in takeaways. So I think Duke can end up with some short fields. They can take advantage of that. I feel I feel pretty good about Duke being able to get a win, get to win number eight on the season, which is just mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. So give me Give me the Blue Devils plus the three and a half. All right. On the other side, we're going to move into the later afternoon slate to hit some of the evening games for Saturday evening. But uh, but first, let's go ahead and let's see. Oh, yeah, we're going to hit Michigan State, Penn State. We're going to hit Tennessee, Vanderbilt. What are the Vols going to do next? we got a lot to discuss. But first, let's check, uh, let's check this out. Let's check out some things you should know about. Follow the show on Twitter at Winning Cures. And you can follow Gary at Gary WCE. You can also follow on Facebook. Got your own podcast or web show? Looking to start one? Or you're just curious how we look and sound so good? 
<laughs> well, we've got all the gear that we use listed on our gear page on the website. And if you order using our links, you'll be supporting the show too. Subscribe on YouTube to get not only full Winning Cures Everything shows, but individual segments and other goodies as well. We're over 6,000 subscribers, and our goal by the end of the year is 7,500. If you're interested in advertising on a show that reaches over 80,000 unique football fans per month during the season, send an email to Gary at winningcureseverything.com, and we'll put together a plan that best fits you or your business. And now, back to the show. All right, let me remind you again about Flow Sports. There is a link in the description. Go and check them out. Uh, live streaming sports all the time. They are fantastic. Good, good partners to have. Go and check them out. Of course, the link is in the description, or you can just go over to flowsports.tv. All right. Uh, oh, enter the picks contest. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Enter in the contest page over there. All right. Now, let's do this. We have got... Da, 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 da. We're moving to Michigan State at Penn State. Now, I got to write my times down, but my hand is not working. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about Michigan State and Penn State. I'm going to go on and pull it up on the screen here. Um, Michigan State is an 18-point underdog on the road. The total sits at 52.5. Of course, that was an ugly, ugly loss to Indiana last week, who had lost seven straight games before they got the win over the Spartans. Uh, the total sits at 52.5 over at BetUS, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. That is what this one has been relegated to. This was an ABC game last year, and now this thing is on FS1 because of how bad Michigan State has been. Penn State uh, favored by 18. Over the past five weeks, my numbers show that Penn State should be favored by 28 points. 28. That is insane. Uh and I'm going to listen to it. I, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to take Penn State minus the 18 here. And the reasoning for that, you look at PPA margin, Penn State is number seven over the past five weeks. Uh, and that, that does include a game against Ohio State. Uh, Michigan State is number 109. Michigan State is number 96 in offensive PPA per drive, number 109 in defensive PPA per drive. Penn State is number 32 in offensive PPA per drive and number 12 in defensive. Like, that's kind of all you need to know at this point, really. Uh, this is this is a bit shocking to see from Michigan State. You know, I, we thought there would be a decline this year with what they lost from last year's team, but this is way worse than we expected. Uh, Penn State is going to try and run the ball. Obviously, they're going to try and establish the run. They will be able to do that. They're number 44 in rushing success rate on offense. Michigan State is number 92 on defense. Uh, PPA per rush, Penn State, number 28. And Michigan State's defense is number 74. This Michigan State defense, even if you had to try and pass the ball on them, say that they are able to finally get some stops because, uh, honestly, they haven't been able to. Standard down PPA defense for Michigan State is number 87. For Penn State, it's number 22. This is a disaster. Just a complete disaster. Uh, Penn State will be able to score almost whatever they want to uh, on Michigan State, it does appear. Michigan State is number 100 in PPA per pass. I look at passing downs PPA, even if you get Penn State into third and long, et cetera, second and long, put them behind the chains, it's not going to matter because Michigan State's defense is number 83 in passing down success rate. Penn State is number 42 on offense. Penn State's number 30 in passing down PPA on offense. Michigan State's number 99. Like, this Michigan State defense is bad, and then you start to look at the offense – they can't run the ball. And not only that, they're still trying to do that. They're still running the ball about 50% of the time. They're number 119 in rushing success rate over the last five weeks. Penn State's defense is number 13. They are number 117 in PPA per rush on offense is Michigan State. Penn State's defense is number eight. Like, Penn State is number one in stuff rate over the past five weeks. Michigan State's offense is number 113 in allowing it. This is a disaster. Uh, but James Franklin has this team absolutely rolling right now. They are still fighting for a New Year's Six berth. They, they're they looking at a 10th win for the first time in, in quite a while. I think they're going to go out and they're going to put everything they can on Michigan State here. Give me Penn State minus the 18. I, yeah, that is, that's a rough one. That's a rough one. 
All right, Tennessee, a 14-point favorite on the road in Nashville against Vanderbilt. Now, a week ago, I would have said, man, I think Tennessee's probably going to fill up that stadium. And they still might. But what a gut punch that was to lose at South Carolina the way that they did and also lose Hendon Hooker for the year. I mean, that's a massive, massive blow. So, yeah, it's it's pretty rough. Pretty rough. Um, Tennessee, a 14-point favorite. Total of 64 on that one. Latest numbers over at BetUS. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the SEC Network. Let's go on and pull it up. Let's take a look at what you are looking at. There's no way for me to pull Hendon Hooker out of my stats, right? So my numbers have Tennessee favored by 25. I don't know that you can look at any of the Tennessee offensive numbers, which are all great, and and read anything into them. Joe Milton is going to start for Tennessee. I don't know what that means. Like, it could be good. Could be great. But I think... I think this is such a bad spot for... It's a bad spot for Tennessee. It just is. There's no other way to spin this. This Vanderbilt offense, I think, can keep up with them, especially with how bad Tennessee's passing defense has been. Uh, Whether it's Mike Wright or A.J. Swan or whoever, uh, Vandy is number 27 in passing success rate over the past five weeks. They are number 17 in passing explosiveness, 22 in passing down PPA. They are number 43 in PPA per pass. PPA, by the way, is predicted points added. Uh, It's effectively an efficiency metric. Like, it, it, it... Gives you like a point total per play. It, Vandy's been really good with PPA per pass lately and their passing success rate, explosive, all, the, all that kind of mess. Tennessee is not good at defending the pass at all. I think Vandy can move the ball on them. As far as the running game is concerned, Tennessee's run defense is still pretty good. I'm just curious about who is actually going to play in this game. How many people are going to be fired up on that Tennessee team to actually go out and try and defend these guys. Vandy's been running the ball 57% of the time over the past five weeks. They're number 86 in rushing success rate, number 72 in PPA per rush, but number 36 in rushing explosiveness. So they can they can find ways to maybe take advantage of Tennessee's defense here. Um, when it comes to Vanderbilt's defense, like they're not great against the pass, but I, who knows what to read here? Uh, because is Joe Milton actually going to be able to hit these guys? Like, he did some against Missouri late, but, yeah, who knows? Who knows what to expect out of Tennessee's offense? Um, I mean, that was such a, that was a hard, hard loss that they took. So, I I would not be surprised if Vanderbilt won this game. I'm going to go ahead and take the doors plus 14 on this because I I think they're going to stay in it. I don't think that the crowd is going to be as crazy in favor of Tennessee here. Yeah, give me, give me the doors. Give me the doors plus the 14 on this one. Moving along, Kansas heads to Kansas State. And the Wildcats are a 12-point favorite. Total sits at 62.5. It's 8 p.m. Eastern time. And this is the Fox game. That's how good Kansas has been this year. Like, Fox is willing to put them in a prime window. And Kansas State, they got to win this game to head over to, of course, the Big 12 title game next week. They have to win this week. Number is 12 on it. Over the past five weeks, I've got Kansas State by 11.75. Yeah, right there on the number. Here's here's the issue. When Kansas State, I, I just assumed that they were going to be really good at running the ball. They have not been over the past five weeks. Kansas State is number 101 in PPA per rush, uh, number 68 in rushing success rate, number 110 in rushing explosiveness, which how is that possible if you've got Deuce Vaughn? That makes no sense. Uh, they're number 102 in offensive line yards, number 124 in stuff rate uh, allowed, and yet, and yet, you look at Kansas' defense, number 110 in PPA per rush allowed, number 112 in rushing success rate allowed, number 125 in offensive line yards allowed, and number 116 in stuff rate allowed, or stuff rate uh, with their defense. And so, Kansas State, like, doesn't have to worry about Kansas' defense. Like, that's... <laughs> It's a massive difference between playing Texas and Baylor and, and whatever else, right? Like, this is a, a huge step down in class as far as the defense is concerned. Now, you look over at the offense, and that number right there will tell you. Um, Kansas, number 14 in offensive PPA per drive. 
they are number one of four in defensive people ever drive. And no, nobody ever accused their defense of being any good. But Lance Leipold and Bunch can absolutely scheme with the best of them. You look at their offense, it doesn't really matter who's playing quarterback. Number 10 PPA per pass. Number 10 in passing success rate on offense. I mean, they are they are good. Passing down PPA, number 6. They are number 45 in standard down PPA. They're number 8 in rushing explosiveness. Like, this, this Kansas State defense is okay. But they're number 64 in PPA per drive. So... I think that Kansas can find a way to stay ahead of the chains. This one could get a little pointy. Uh, The total here is set at 62 and a half. Yeah, there's a way. Like, neither one of these teams turns the ball over. Like, uh, number 13 in turnover margin for Kansas, number four for Kansas State. I think both of these teams will be able to score, but I trust Kansas State to be able to score more because I think that Kansas uh, sometimes can shoot themselves in the foot just a little bit. So I, I will take Kansas State minus the 12. The motivation is certainly more on their side. I, I say that, you know, Kansas, they haven't beaten Kansas State in a while. They might really, really want this. But Kansas State is vying for a Big 12 title game. I think they're going to be fired up in Manhattan. Uh, yeah, if this was in Lawrence, maybe I'd feel a little bit differently. But, uh, but yeah, give me Kansas State. Cover the 12 here. Not too shabby. Last game on the board. We're moving to the Mountain West. We've got Air Force headed to San Diego State. Of course, a little uh, little Pac-12 love, maybe. You know, just a little bit. Air Force is a one-and-a-half point favorite. Total sits at 44 on this one. It's 9 p.m. Eastern time on CBS Sports Network. And let's talk about it. Let's move it up on to your screen. And I've got Air Force over the past five weeks favored by 4.73. Air Force has not won against San Diego State, no matter the location, since 2009. They are just not good at doing it, which is why uh, my full season stats have Air Force favored over San Diego State by like eight and a half. But over the past five weeks, it's 4.73 because San Diego State, I mean, you see them, PPA margin number nine, their offensive PPA per drive is number 26. Like Maiden is an actual quarterback that can throw the ball they are pretty good. Pretty, pretty good on offense. Number three, PPA per pass. Number 16 in passing success rate over the last five weeks. But that Air Force defense is pretty good. Number 24, PPA per pass allowed. Number 39 in passing success rate allowed. Number 15 in passing explosiveness. Like, they they defend well what, what San Diego State wants to do on offense. As far as running the ball, San Diego State cannot do it. They cannot do it, even though they try it a lot. They run the ball 56% of the time, or close to 57. But they're number 84 in rushing success rate. Air Force is number 35 on defense. Uh, And they are number 91 in PPA per rush. Air Force is number 73. So, eh, something to pay attention to with that for sure. Standard downs PPA. uh, Air Force number 30 on defense. San Diego State number 72. Like, even if they are behind the chains, uh, San Diego State, they... They know they're good at passing the ball. I will say that. Passing downs PPA when they get in second, third, and long, uh, they are able to convert, and they'll probably be able to do so here um, because Air Force is number 61 in passing downs PPA, but they are number 27 in passing down success rate allowed. So something to watch when it comes to that. As far as the Air Force offense is concerned, uh, we'll scroll it down here and take a look. Air Force, obviously, they throw the ball 12% of the time. I mean, it's the lowest rate in the country. They ain't worried about it. They ain't worried about throwing the ball, so don't even pay attention to those stats. But when it comes to running the football, well, San Diego State is still pretty good with that 3-3-5 defense at stopping the run. Will they be good enough to stop Air Force's version of running the ball? That remains to be seen. Air Force number one in stuff rate allowed. And San Diego State's defense is number 31 in that on defense. Uh, PPA per rush. Air Force is number 11. Uh, San Diego State is number three in PPA per rush allowed. But when it comes to this, San Diego State is only having to defend the run 35% of the time. Like, they are number one in lowest rush rate allowed over the past five weeks. Air Force is number one at running the ball. They run the ball 87% of the time. So, something to pay attention to with this. Uh, Most teams know that they cannot run the football on San Diego State. So they just don't do it. Air Force doesn't have that option. 
So can they scheme up enough to be able to actually score? That's where this game is going to be won and lost. I have got an Air Force over eight and a half win ticket. I might hedge a little bit and take some San Diego State money line. But when it comes to the numbers here, I think I'm going to ride with Air Force to cover the one and a half. I think this is the kind of year where San Diego State plays differently than they have in a very long time. They get a little risky with the ball. Uh, you start to look at turnover margin. Uh, San Diego State is number 70 in giveaways per game. Well, Air Force is number 22. The team that's more likely to beat themselves here would be San Diego State. So I'm going to ride with that. I'm going to go ahead and take Air Force. Minus the one and a half here. May, may seem kind of dumb considering, again, Air Force has not beaten San Diego State since 2009. But alas, here I am. I am expecting winds of change when it comes to the Mountain West right here. All right, we'll close up shop with this. My super contest picks for NFL week number 12. Last week I went 2-3. and three. I'm 30-24 and 24 on the season in my NFL super contest picks. Uh, I don't give a full breakdown. I used to do that. I don't do it. Now, this is what I've got for this week, okay? Steelers plus 2.5 at the Colts. I think the Steelers should be favored here. I understand what the Colts have done over the last two weeks. Not bothering me. Give me the Steelers. Patriots plus two and a half at the Vikings. Everybody saw how bad the Patriots looked even in a win against the Jets. Everybody thinks that the Vikings at home probably going to bounce back on Thanksgiving because, oh, they looked so bad against uh, against the Cowboys. Yeah, they're going to come back and they're going to squash the Patriots. Eh, g- give me the Patriots. This feels like the, the spot for them. So Patriots plus two and a half. Falcons plus four and a half at the Commanders. At most, I think this should be a field goal. I understand that Taylor Heineke has played really, really well, but I like what Arthur Smith is doing with this Falcons team. Uh, I like the Ravens to cover four against the Jaguars. Make sure that I've got the right line on that. And I do, okay. And uh, in my last one here, give me the Lions plus nine and a half against the Buffalo Bills. Um, the Lions are at home, but I I feel really good about this Lions team who has won multiple in a row. I Yes, I understand that the Bills are just kind of all over the place. They, they've already been in Detroit for a week, but I, I like this Lions team. I like what MCDC is doing. Give me Motor City Dan Campbell, and let's roll with this thing. I will take the Lions at plus the 9.5. I think they could probably win the game outright if they get a little bit of help. A little bit of help from Josh Allen throwing it to the wrong team. So that is the way we're going to roll this week. Hopefully uh, hopefully going to improve on the 30-24 and record over there. Remember, go and check out the BetUS College football show for sure over there. And uh, and yeah, yeah, I think this has been a good week. So BetUS.com, FlowSports.tv. Uh, click the link in the description for all of this stuff, of course. Valtimary Surf Company. Uh, yeah, lots of things in motion. Heading into bowl season, heading into championship week, etc. What a fantastic week. Hopefully you and yours have a great Thanksgiving. I'm going to try and do one more show where we actually discuss news and give a little bit of a preview for the weekend. We'll talk about the biggest 10-point uh, uh, plus underdogs, etc. But uh, yeah, we got more to discuss. Go over to winningcureseverything.com and... That's going to wrap it up. You guys take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully, hopefully, all of you tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.